Tonight, what Oscar Pistorius said he shouted just before he fired his gun. I said, get the f*** out of my ass. Get the f*** out of my ass. The athlete broke down repeatedly as the prosecutor accused him of weeping for himself. You're not using your emotional state as an escape, are you? Good evening. Oscar Pistorius has faced a fourth day of intense cross-examination in the witness box. He was picked up on alleged inconsistencies in his account and was accused of tailoring his version to fit the evidence. During the relentless and detailed questioning, Pistorius broke down as he described shouting at a purported intruder and again when explaining why he fired his gun. The prosecutor, Harry Nell, said those emotions in court were not for his dead girlfriend, but because he was mixing up his own defence. Lisa Holland has been listening to today's testimony. The strain appears to be showing for Oscar Pistorius, but his supporters were on hand to rally the athlete as he faced another gruelling day in court. He began his second week in the witness box with the prosecutor promising to prove the Olympian had made up his version of events. Uh, Mr. Pistorius, my argument will be, and that what, uh, what the cross-examination will focus on today, is that your version is so improbable that it cannot be reasonably possibly true. I'm going further, Mr. Pistorius, I'm saying that your version of events is in fact untrue. Then, before we start, Mr. Pistorius, I say you've got a concocted version, which you've tailored to fit the state's case, and you're tailoring your version as you're sitting there. You understand what I'm saying, Mr. Pistorius? I do, my lady. Good. The prosecutor wanted to know why Riva Steenkamp, known for being neat, had all her clothes packed except her jeans. Everything else, undergarments, other clothes, are all in the overnight bag. The only thing outside of that overnight bag is her jeans. You don't have an idea why? I don't, my lady, my only reference, so the only thing I can think of is that she wore the jeans that day and maybe the things in her overnight bag were clean clothes, I, I'm not sure. Isn't the reason that she wanted to leave and wanted to get dressed, that's why the denim is, uh, the jeans are out of place? She wanted to leave and get dressed. My lady, the denims are inside out, so it would make sense that that's when she took them off, that she just left them on the floor. But why, why would she leave them on the floor if everything else that she had on, everything else, is in the overnight bag? Why would she leave that particular jeans outside? I don't know, my lady. Well, I'm saying, and it's a state's case, Mr. Pistur, is that she wanted to leave and that you weren't sleeping. You were both awake. That's not correct, my lady. It's untrue and that there was an argument. That's not true, my lady. Harry Nell picked through Oscar Pistorius's version of events at his Pretoria home on Valentine's Day last year. Oscar Pistorius was asked about the moment he says he heard a noise in the bathroom. When you armed yourself and you spoke to Reva, what did, what did you say? I told her to get down and to phone the police, my lady. In what way did you say it? In a low tone, my lady. In a low tone. Definitely did not whisper. No, I remember saying it in a low tone, my lady. Just as I, just as I left my bed, I whispered for Reba to get down and phone the police. Now, that is your evidence in chief. Why, would, why are you trying to steer away from a whisper? I'm not trying to steer away from a whisper, my lady. I've said before that I remember talking in a low tone, and this morning I, when I asked this question, I said, I think I spoke to her in a low tone. So if I said I whispered there, it wasn't a whisper. It was a low tone in which I spoke to her. The theme for the day is tailoring your event. I'm putting it to you. That's what you're doing. 
you're tailoring your evidence. My lady, if I was tailoring my evidence, it would suit me to whisper, not to talk in a low tone. I don't understand how that could be seen as tailoring my evidence. Harry Nell wanted to know why the athlete hadn't asked his girlfriend if she had also heard the noise. The noise was loud, my lady. It was the window opening mm. and, and sliding and then hitting the, door, hitting the window frame. It was clear. And <coughs> let us just speculate. If Reba wasn't big, she would have heard that as well. That's correct, my lady. At least, uh, would you then have expected a conversation? No, uh, saying, did you hear that, Oz? No, my lady. And I Why wouldn't. not? Why would she not have, uh, if she was there, not, not have Because if she had heard it, she would have been as scared as I was. And when I said to her, get down on the floor and call the police, that's what she would have done. She wouldn't <laughs> have engaged in a conversation. If she had heard what I'd heard, there wouldn't be a response. No, I don't agree with you, Mr. Pistorius. Wouldn't you expect a response from her, a, door, a window opening in the middle of the night whilst you're in bed, Mr. Pistorius, you just don't want to concede anything. Now, if you were so convinced that it is two voice, two noises, in fact, a window sliding open and slamming into the other window, why would you not have put that in your bail statement? Because that is important. When my bail was done, it was done by my legal team. It was read to me in a holding cell. I was on medication. I was traumatized. I read it and it was the truth, and I signed it, my lady. It, I didn't there was no understanding that it needed to be an exhausted statement. What happened next was to lead to another breakdown in the witness box for Oscar Pistorius, as he recounted how he made his way from the bedroom to the bathroom via this passage. Where did you start shouting? Yes, I started shouting in the passage, my lady. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and you shouted what? Words to the effect, or what did you shout? Words to the effect of, for the intruder or intruders to get out of my house, for people to get out of my house, and for Eva to phone the police, my okay. lady. But can you remember what you shouted? Yes, I can. What, what did you shout? I screamed, I said, get the f*** out of my ass. Get the f*** out of my ass. Mr. Pistorius, are you well enough to proceed? Yes, thank you, my lady. Mr. Pistorius, you just told us what you, sh what you shouted and then you got emotional. <coughs> Why would that cause you to be emotional? It's a traumatic evening for me, my lady. Why would it be traumatic what you shouted at the, at the intruders? Because I was terrified, my lady. Isn't it exactly because that's what you shouted at Riva? Get the, with respect to the court, I'll just repeat what you said. Get the f*** out of, you, out of my house. That's what you, what you shouted at Riva. Isn't that why you got emotional now? No, my lady. Because I don't understand why you would get emotional if now, today, about things that you shouted at the intruders. My lady, I'm, I'm traumatized by the events and it, by repeating those exact words, it reminds me about the night and what I felt on that evening. At the heart of this murder trial, why did Oscar Pistorius fire his gun and whether he is guilty of murder? You didn't know how many people were in there? That's correct, my lady. You didn't know if they were armed? That's correct, my lady. You didn't know if it, it could have been a child? That's Could correct. have been anyone. That's correct, my lady. Could, Could have been a burglar unarmed. That's correct, my lady. But you gave them no chance. You just fired. That's correct, my lady. Then, what is your defence? My defence is, as I said, my lady, I heard the noise and I didn't have time to interpret it and I fired my firearm out of fear, my lady. No, th then, out of fear... By accident. Because I don't understand your defense. You know, I have to give a lot of answers. And you know why, Mr. Pistorius? It's because you, you know exactly. You fired at Riva. 
These other versions of yours cannot not work. True, you find at her. You did. Why are you getting emotional now? I did not find that Rima. I'm going to argue that you got emotional because you got your defenses mixed up. And that's the reason why you just got emotional. Nothing else. What do you want to say to that? It's not true, my lady. We, we must the risk correct. I on Friday on one occasion said to you, you wanted to shoot Riva. You didn't burst into tears. You just said no. Why today? I don't know, my lady. I do. And that is because, Mr. P <coughs> Mr. Pistorius, you got, you were, I indicated to you how you got your defenses mixed up. That caused the emotion in you. Lady, Nothing I else. I don't even understand the differences in the defenses. I don't understand the law. So it's not for that reason, my lady. That's why you cried, because you don't understand the implications. Coming up, Oscar Pistorius explains why he didn't fire a warning shot. Welcome back. The state prosecutor continued today his relentless attempt to pull apart Oscar Pistorius' account of the events on the night that he shot his girlfriend. Carinel put it to Pistorius that all the screams and shouts were aimed at her behind the bathroom door, not an intruder. Did you ever think of firing into the shower a warning shot? My lady, if I fired a shot into the shower, it would have ricocheted and possibly hit me. Firing into that door, in that small toilet, a ricochet of that ammunition would be possible and it would hit somebody. Am I right? That's correct, my lady. Yeah. So you foresaw the possibility, if I fire in there and there's somebody in there, I will hit them. That's not what I said, my lady. No, but I asked you, did you? No, my lady. What then? When you fired in there, what did you think? As I said, I didn't think. My firearm was pointed at the door at that time. My lady, I didn't intend to fire my gun. My gun was pointed at the door, and when I heard the noise, I fired. You did not intend to fire your gun. Your gun just went off. Can we, is that what we can accept for going forward in this matter? No, my gun didn't just go off, my lady. No. I didn't intend to fire, but I but did fire, but it didn't is, just go off. Is it like the Glock? Did it just go off, or did you pull the trigger? I pulled the trigger, my lady. Because I perceive danger to be coming out to attack me, my lady. When you want to, you fight at the danger. And when you don't want to, the, the shots just go off. Did, was it just lucky that your gun was pointed in the direction of the How north? How would that be lucky? She lost her life, my lady. No, Mr. Pistorius. You now try and, and to get emotional again. But it, it's not worth your while. Riva going to the toilet. She would have had to walk down a dark passage. Why would she not put on a light? I'm not sure, my lady. She had her cell phone with her, so maybe she was using that for light. A cell phone for light, Mr. Pistorius. As far as your version is concerned, it's even in worse trouble. You would have seen a light walking down the passage. It doesn't change anything, my lady. My back was towards her. It doesn't matter if she had a light or not. No, Mr. Pistorius. It's devastating for you. You would have seen it in peripheral vision. It was pitch dark. Bullet hole A was the first shot. Why would she stand there, Mr. Pistorius, if she was scared? I don't know, my lady. Because she was talking to you, sir. That's not true, my lady. All the screams and shouts, you scre screamed at her. And she fled for her life. Before I know it, I had fired four shots at the door. I kept the firearm pointed in front of me. And then I slowly made my way back track to my bed. Screaming? Why would you scream? <coughs> Why would you scream out? I was scared. I wanted to Sca ask Reva why if she was phoning the police. I was scared that there was someone coming out of the bathroom stall. And then I got to the bed. And then I realized Reva wasn't there. I got off. If you look at the bed at the right hand side, I got off the bed. I stuck my left hand out to my tried to feel the curtains, <laughs> hoping maybe she was hiding behind them. 
And then I started panicking because I realized that Reva wasn't just replying to me. She wasn't, I couldn't see her and I couldn't, I couldn't hear her. So I went back to the bathroom as quick as I could and I got back to the entrance of the, of the bathroom. <laughs> I was screaming, I started to scream out for her. I was scared entering the bathroom again. Let's take it much slower. You told her to get down. You thought she was on the floor, on the right hand side of the bed. I was hoping she was there. Okay. She heard shots in the meantime. Why would she not have left through the door? Why would you think it's Reva in the bathroom if you haven't checked everywhere? Why? Because you wouldn't check everywhere if you knew that there was someone in the toilet, my lady. You wouldn't waste time looking behind the couch, looking under the bed, looking behind the curtains. But it's an intruder. It was an intruder behind the door. You didn't, that was your perception. That was my perception, my lady. You see, Mr. Pistorius, this is one of the crucial issues. Because it's a huge leap from, I've just shot at the intruders and it could have been real. You said to... to to this court, you were fixated between the door and the ladder. Door, la ladder, door, ladder. But you approached the door without checking the ladder. Why not? Because when I thought it was Reva, my lady, I wouldn't have thought that she climbed out of the window. And no. even if she had, I didn't fire at the window. So my first thought was to check the door. You never checked the ladder. I never did because once I checked the door and I realized it was locked, I realized there was somebody inside. No, but that somebody, you cannot make the leap that it's Reva. It could at that stage still have been an uh, intruder. That's correct. Why lady. did you not check the ladder first? You, you entering... Because I my mind was with Reva. I was worried it was Reva. I, it could, yes, it could still be an intruder, no. but my mind was with Reva. No, your mind couldn't have been with Reva then. Because I'll go through evidence. Your evidence is at that stage I didn't know. I was still fearful of the intruders. That's correct, my lady. So you've got a gun, a cock gun, in your in your right hand. You unlock the door. You open both doors. And that gun was never. You never discharged that gun again. That's correct, my lady. You see, Mr. Pistorius, it, it's getting more and My lady, more I understand. Improbable. I understand how it sounds. But if you look at the photos, when I placed the gun down on the floor in the, in the bathroom, the gun was still loaded and cocked. It was unsafe. If I look back now and I realize how much I was busy there on the floor, I could have, the gun, I could have kicked it and it could have shot me or Eva again. You see, so my mind wasn't thinking about this gun in my hand. Why are you getting emotional now? Is it about what happened or is it about the questions and your frustration in answering them? Because now we dealt with nothing but your version. Why are you getting emotional? It's emotional. It's emotional no. memories for me. No, it's not. It, you're getting frustrated because your version is improbable and you, you're getting emotional. We haven't spoken about Riva. We haven't spoken about anything now. But you're getting emotional. Why? I was speaking about Riva, my lady. Mr. Pistorius, you're not using your emotional state as an escape, are you? No, my lady. So you went back, you put on your prosthetic legs. What happened then? Um, when I put my prosthetic legs on my firearm, was next to my side on the bed. Put on my prosthetic legs, I ran back to the toilet. I ran straight into the door. I tried to shoulder charge the door. Nothing happened. Wait, but before you go there, you took your gun along. That's correct. Well, Why? Well, Why would you at that stage, Mr. Pistorius, take your gun along? It I, doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense, my lady. I don't know why I would have. No. You see, it's because you're building a version that is so improbable that nobody would ever believe. My lady, if I was building a version, I would have said I left the gun there earlier. I didn't, though. I understand that it doesn't sound rational, but I didn't have a rational set of my rational frame of mind. I wanted to get into the toilet. I don't know why I'd... No, you see, Mr. Pistorius, it's because that gun was left there after you shot and killed Reva. Just after. You fired the shot, you left the gun there. That's what happened. That's incorrect, my lady. So the end of a fourth day of cross-examination for Oscar Pistorius, and it hasn't got any easier. Mr. Nell 
as relentless as ever. Let's find out uh, what Alex Crawford, our correspondent, and Lobo Des Neves, who's a law enforcement expert, have a think about today. Alex, you were in court. What did you make of it? I think this is probably the worst of four very, very bad days. I mean, he stuttered, he stumbled, he was evasive, he backtracked, he contradicted. He seemed to be evolving his own evidence and changing it, doing exactly what Harry Nell was accusing him of doing, which was tailoring it or manufacturing one to fit the events. And he was caught out on a multitude of small detail. Lobo is a law enforcement man, particularly a man who understands firearms and has spent a lifetime investigating cases like this. What did you make of his case? Did it add up to you? I think that he's basically lost his uh, plea to, uh, today because he's contradicted himself. Um, it's very hard to try and convince a court that you acted in self-defense and then at the same time try and convince the court that you didn't mean to hurt anyone. If we look at the first round in isolation, I think it's now a common cause that the first round hit the deceased in the hip. Um, the, the advisability of a person with such a painful wound not making a single sound is, is, is quite remote. What he says is his version of the story and what the state says they believe to be the true. And there, uh, there seem to be big contradictions there. Yes, I mean, for the first time, Gerinel is he goes at him and he's dogged in his questioning and his uh, you know, insistence on the details. So when he says, what did you shout? And Oscar says, I don't know, I'm not sure, I can't remember. He insists, 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 until finally Oscar comes up with the phrase, he shouted, get the F out of my house, using a four-word expletive. And Kerinell turned that round to him and saying, that's not what you shouted at the intruder, that's what you shouted at Revis Dean Camp. You'd had a row, and his... Uh, Harry Nell's view of what happened was that the two of them had a row and he was shouting at, at Reva to get out of the house and she ran towards the toilet cubicle to get away from him and was standing out inside the to toilet cubicle talking to him when he shot. And each time, uh, Oscar Pistorius dissolved into tears and uh, finally the prosecutor said, are you using your emotion to hide behind uh, a made-up scenario, essentially? Alex Lobe, thanks very much for your thoughts on day 22, the sixth day that uh, Oscar Pistorius has spent in the witness box in this court. He's back in there for a seventh day tomorrow. Do join us from 8.30 in the morning, London time, at the trial of Oscar Pistorius.